started off with that when the tape was rolling. My question is, you mentioned before that humankind is no more important than the garden slug. Yuji, will you please comment on that? But for some reason we are made to believe, or we uh, have accepted, you see, that belief passed on to us from generation to generation, uh, that we are here for some grander purpose, for a nobler purpose, other than the species on this planet, you see. So I maintain that we are here not for any grander purpose other than the garden slug out there or the mosquito that is sucking your blood. If what we are told by uh, these biologists and the evolutionists, is there, is there any such thing as an evolutionist? I don't know, those who have talked about the evolution. Uh, made us believe that, uh, and we are told that uh, if you look at this planet, and uh, look at the animal species that we have. What we have on this planet is only 1.5% of what existed before. And uh, if you take the, the plants into consideration, you see, uh, what we have on this planet is only 0.5, you see, of what existed before. And what makes us think that we are any more important and that the human species is more important than the other species that have become extinct, you see? And what uh, has made possible for us to survive and go on, you see, and give con maintain this human species on this planet longer than is the thought, you see, that has made it possible, you see, to live longer than the others. She said that may be... Thought, uh, uh, thought has made it possible for us yes, to live longer? Yes, you see. And uh, maybe, you see, that, that is our enemy. Thought is our enemy. In the long run, our belief, hope, faith in the thought that will help us to free us from the problems that thought has created will be just a wishful thinking. I don't know, you see. How has thought made us live longer? And if it has helped us to live longer as a species, see, how can it be an impediment? Is, thought is a protective mechanism, you see. It is interested in protecting something. We use thought for the purpose of maintaining, you see, the continuity of thought, you see. So anything that has come out of thought is protective in its nature, you see. It is not interested in protecting the life around it has separated us from the, uh, the, the singleness, you see, of life, the singleness or the unity of life around us, isolated us from the rest of the, the species on this planet, and it has given us the idea that we are something different, that the whole thing is created for our purpose, and we have a right, you see, to take advantage of this uh, superiority of thought we have over others to do whatever we want to do, you see, on this planet. I don't know if it makes any sense to them yes. say, say. Would, would it be possible to have thought without this idea that we can take advantage of nature? The, the, so thought, it, thought means... So that is why you see, I maintain and I very often say uh, that thought in its birth, uh, in its content, in its uh, expression, and in its action is fascist, you see. It's very aggressive. Fascist. Yes, uh, I, I use the word fascist not only uh, since the politicians uh, use that word and talk about it, it's very aggressive. Our very demand to understand the nature's laws is to use them for the purpose of maintaining the continuity. See, although we say that you know, it's all altruistic and that we are curious to know the laws of nature just for the sake of knowing, but the very motivation, the, the drive behind our demand to understand the laws of nature is to use them for the purposes of continuing the continuity of the human species at the expense of every other form of life on this planet. What would the human species be if it did not have this kind of thought? Probably we would have become extinct and nature would have created a better form of human species on this planet. It is anybody's guess, you see. I, I am not particularly fond of our uh, let's see, well, what's the word you see, or um, I don't get the right word. Uh, yes. I don't think particularly, I'm very proud of the human species on this planet. You You're see. not proud? Not very proud, you see. We, 
we would do anything that the animals would not uh, do. You see, they, it's the survival of one form of life and another form of life is a fact in nature. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we kill other species for an idea. You see, for a we kill for ourselves a belief. for an idea. There certainly we kill others too. You see, but. That kind of a thing you don't see it happen in any other forms of life, other species on this planet. We kill for an idea. So the whole foundation of our culture or civilization um, is built on the foundation of to kill and to be killed. First in the name of God symbolized uh, in the church and all the other religious institutions and in the name of political ideologies symbolized by state. So the whole foundation of culture, you see, the, is built on the foundation to kill and to be killed. But of course, we don't really admit that. We, we say we, we we say that we're we're our cultures are based on higher ideals is, of harmony. Is, and we are moving progressively in the direction of destroying everything. You see, you know, we somehow have a tremendous faith that the thought that has helped us to create everything that you see and you are very proud of will help us, you see, to change the course of events. This faith I maintain is misplaced, you see. Somehow we have a faith that this instrument which has helped us to be what we are today... The mind, uh, the, the thoughts. Yeah, the thoughts. Somehow will help us to create a better, happier and... Uh, uh, life on this planet, you see. Well, how do we get? I mean, if that's if we're just headed down this path of destruction, so everything how do we you get discover is adding to the momentum, you see, of destruction. You mm -hmm. see. It would seem that everything, everything is because the the drive behind that, you see, is to use it for purposes of maintaining the continuity, the status quo. Is there any possibility that the human species will figure uh, that out in time and and change course? And uh, if it changes course, what will, I what say, will the change have I to say be? I say slim to none. We are doomed, you see. And <laughs> <laughs> as I said uh, at the very beginning, we are lost in the jungle. We have tried every possible uh, means of escape. But still, somehow, there is a faint hope that maybe, you see, there is some way we can get out of the jungle. But uh, we just have to stand still and let things happen, you see. You know? But how can we stand still? What's the You cannot stand standing still. still, you see. You cannot stand still because of the fear that uh, we are lost and that we will be lost forever. But we don't seem to have that... Uh, the feeling that, you see, that there isn't a damn thing, I'm sorry to use that word damn, that we can do uh, to get rid of this uh, jungle. Are you, do you stand still in this uh, way? Yes, certainly, you see. So then, what we, is there takes over. And probably, you see, uh, it make you live in the midst of all these brutalities. Uh, see, a life that it has a charm of its own, you see. You are not in conflict with the society at all, then. You don't even want to change anything, you see. How did the, you, the how demand to change is born out of this isolation, you see. So that when once you think that you can bring about a change in you, the demand to change the world also is there. See, this human body, is not interested in learning anything. It is not interested in knowing anything. All that is necessary for the survival of this living organism is already there. It, there is a tremendous intelligence. And all that we have gathered, acquired through our intellect is no match to that. But somehow... To the intelligence of the body. The intelligence of the body, you see. It knows, you see. So one of the things that I always emphasize and try to put across to those who are interested in listening to what I am saying is that the human brain, you see, is not interested in anything that we are interested in. You see, the, the, what the culture has imposed on us, all the ideations and mentations. It is so dull, you will be surprised, you see. It's 
So it is not interested in any experience of any kind. What it is interested in is to help the functioning of this body intelligently and sanely. But the brain is the, the brain, you see. So, but unfortunately, we have put that brain to use for which it, nature has not intended it. You see. So, what? It's not a creator. Brain is not a creator. You see. Uh, it is only a reactor. It reacts to the stimulus. You see. So the mechanism that we have there, implanted as it were, through our education, through our culture, or whatever you want to call it, has turned that into, or make us believe that it is a creator, you see. All the thoughts that we are thinking are not self-generated, they are not spontaneous, mm -hmm. they always come from outside. And the brain is there only, you see, to translate the sensations and the translation that is necessary for the survival of this living organism. It's not interested in any of the spiritual experiences. You see, anything that the mind is interested, mind quote and unquote, I don't see any mind there at all, you see, is interested only in sensuality. It is born out of sensuality. It maintains its continuity in the field of sensuality. So all religious experiences of any kind are sensual in their nature. Mm -hmm. It's only the mind that is interested in the spiritual experiences, bliss, love, compassion, truth, reality, and all kinds of things. But the body, the living organism, is not interested in any of those things except to respond to the stimuli. If the, brain, if the brain isn't creative, is the intelligence of the body creative, or is it just a response? The creativity is totally unrelated, you see, to the creativity of life. Create, you see, the, I don't know if I make any sense. What's the source of creativity, or is there even creativity There, there in is nature? no creativity in the sense in which we are using the word, you see. Mm -hmm. The creativity of language, the creativity of thought, the creativity of this, that, and the other. You see, life is creative in the sense that it does not use any model. You see, anything we call creative is an imitation copy of something that is already there. It is the second hand, you see. So if something is created, if it's not uh, up to the point or what, I don't see even any uh, blueprint there, you see. Whatever blueprint is there is already there in this self, you see, everything that is there now, uh, what you call mm -hmm. you, was there in a single cell. Mm -hmm. With DNA. So everything is genetically controlled, you see, in that sense we don't seem to have... Everything. Everything, you see, is genetically controlled. There's nothing, there's nothing, no little, little shred of something that's not under this control. The idea that there is something that we can do to bring about a change in that, you see, and change in the world is placed is placed us in a situation where we are left with hope, you see, that somehow we can bring about a change here and a change around us. Is, so is we change, live in that hope and die in that hope. Is change possible even if What kind possible? of a change you are interested in? The change is possible if you are not interested in the shape of uh, my stubbed nose. You can go to a plastic surgeon and change it into an aquiline nose, you see, if it is fashionable to have aquiline nose, is that the word? Uh, then there is a possibility of uh, getting the help of a plastic surgeon or through genetic engineering, uh, it will be possible for us to bring about a change, you see, in your behavior patterns, you see. So, the nature, if I, I, not that I have a special insight into the nature of things, that I understand the workings of the nature more than anybody else. This is what I have discovered for myself. I don't care whether you accept what I am saying or not. It stands or falls by itself. I don't care even if the biologists, the psychologists, the scientists, you see, embrace this aside and say, oh, this is absolute rubbish. You see, one of these days they are going to discover. Well, what, the, how does one discover that? You see, the, this is, uh, the discovery is not within the framework of thinking. So, in the other words, there is no such thing as discovery. The discovery is, uh, is, is a wrong word because we use that word discovery. And Here's the name of my radio show. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's very interesting. <laughs> you see. <laughs> the wrong word. Huh? <laughs> you, you experience what you already know. 
Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there is no experience at all. There is no such thing as new experience. The so-called uh, epoch-making discoveries in the field of science uh, are not really epoch-making discoveries, you see. Uh, take, for example, the Newtonian physics. It worked very well, you see, for uh, some decades or probably centuries. But uh, that very Newtonian physics uh, proved to be is a, a stumbling block for making uh, a quantum jump, if I may use that word, mm -hmm. quote and unquote. Mm -hmm. Somehow, you see, somebody like Einstein was lucky you see, to take that leap mm -hmm. and discover something different, you see. Did he really yes. discover something different? or was Actually, it, it is not different, you see, unless you link up these two things, you see, the, what was there before and what you think you have discovered, uh, there is no point, you see, in talking about that at all, you see. The scientist is interested in linking up these things mm -hmm. and producing some results. Otherwise, it has no value at all. So, the Newtonian physics is valid and functional and true within the framework of Newtonian physics, but from uh, what we have discovered, you see, what somebody else has helped us to discover, that there is such a thing as relativity. This becomes uh, uh, not so true, not so valid, you see, but it is uh, still within the framework of the scientific thinking of man, and we admire all these people and uh, reward them with uh, prestigious honors, Nobel Prize, this, that, and the other, because of the technology, you see, that has become possible through the discoveries of these people, you see. So otherwise, uh, there is no such thing as uh, true discovery, there is no such thing as pure science at all. I, I may be making a lot of dogmatic statements, but uh, my statements stand or fall by themselves. But there must be, uh, if we... Why do you say there must be? There may not be. See, then where do we go from there may not be? If we use another word than discovery, right, is, there some, is there something... I mean, you, you apparently have had some experiences that help you to I have, see this more clearly. I have... How, how does that... Well, maybe you can talk about your experiences. Yes, yeah, I, I very often and um, always invariably use the word uh, stumbled into, you see. Uh -huh. So somehow, somewhere along my uh, discovery journey of discovery, it occurred to me that this instrument which we have been using, what we call intellect, is not really the instrument to understand anything. Huh. But uh, I was very clear that, you see, the only instrument there is the intellect. And there is no other instrument, you see. So what the whole process of our discovery is nothing but, uh, you see, improving that, uh, which is instrument. Improving the intellect. The, yes, intellect. Sharpening that intellect. That's all that is there, you see. So this has not helped me to understand the living problems of my life, you see, mm -hmm. you know, understanding myself and the world around, you see, except that this is not the instrument and there is, I don't know, I am not able to complete even sentences, it doesn't matter, you see. So this is not the instrument and there is no other instrument. This understanding dawned on me that this is not the instrument and there is no other instrument. We, the human being does not possess an instrument to understand. There is no instrument to understand anything other than through the help of this instrument and there is no other instrument. So that knocks off the whole foundation of intuition or any other way of understanding the realities around you. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing to understand. So that is why I maintain that there is no such thing as reality at all, let alone the ultimate reality. You have no way of experiencing the reality of anything. What are we experiencing? The reality that we have taken for granted. We don't experience anything what other than what we know. So we're just experiencing it's repetitive, our thoughts. It's a repetitive process, you see, experiencing the same thing over and over and over again. So that is why we are bored. You see, so hoping one day you will find something 
uh, extraordinary, some new experience. The moment you say, that's something which I have not experienced before, that's a new experience means that it is already part of the past experiencing mechanism. Mm -hmm. Are you so, bored, Yuji? Uh, see, the, the boredom is there only when you think that there is something more interesting, more purposeful, more meaningful that you can do than what you are doing. And you don't feel that, state. you don't feel that, so that's, you can't do That's all bored. that is there for me. Well, how did, how did you get to this point uh, of... I wish, I wish I knew, that's why I used the word I just stumbled into. Do you, so, do you know? There is no way there is no way I can communicate this to somebody, you see. So, anybody who comes and listens to me and tries to understand what I'm trying to put across is wasting his time, because there is no way you can listen to anything without interpretation. You see, the interpreter is the reference point, that is not you. You are the product of the totality of all the thoughts experiences and feelings of every form of life that existed before you. So it is interested uh, hmm. in maintaining its continuity, it is interested in maintaining its status quo, it does not want any change, it says that it wants to change and that change that it is interested in is only to maintain its continuity, its status quo, the change it is interested in. But things are changing so constantly that it does not want, you see, to accept anything that will disturb its status quo. So the reference point is strengthened and fortified by interpreting what I am saying to you, mm -hmm. or not to anybody. So, so all we're just, these we're just converse, stuck, we're huh? just completely stuck. But we don't want to accept that any attempt on your part to get out of that trap in which you find yourself is strengthening the shackles. So and we, there is no way out. So we have to accept that we're stuck. Accepting means that you are sick and tired of doing anything, but it does not really mean anything. So we don't. We have to. We have to <laughs> not need purpose in life. Why do we look for a purpose or well, why meaning? Do, why? why, do we, why? That's a good question. Why do yeah. we? Uh, well, you tell me. Why? Why should there be any meaning? You see, the meaning, uh, the, the question, how to live is it totally unrelated, you see, to the functioning of this living God. It is living all the time, you see. So it doesn't have to ask the question, how to live? So how to live is superimposed on this. And the search for meaning is, is search absurd. For, obviously you do not see any meaning, you do not see any purpose in life. Obviously you don't see. So, <laughs> No, I don't mean you, you see, I the, peop the people... <laughs> me and but, everyone else. <laughs> you see, the, to me, to ask the question is, is it so silly, so meaningless, so absurd, what is the meaning of life? You see, it is not the life that uh, uh, we are really interested in, you see, the living. You see, the problem of living has become a very tiring uh, business for us, to live in this world, mm -hmm. uh, to live with somebody else, to live with our feelings, to feel, live with our... Uh, ideas. You see, that is the, 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 in other words, it's the value system that we are thrown into. You see, the value system is a false. It's like <laughs> it's, glue all over yes. us. Yes. And so we are trying to fit ourselves into that value system, you see, which is totally false and it is falsifying you. You are not ready to accept that that is falsifying you. So you, you throw a lot of energy into this business of fitting yourself into that frame. Well, how, do, how does one get to the point where they're willing to accept that this is false? It I'm going to jump in here because this conversation is going so rapidly it's hard to find a break. I'm Barbara Rose Schuler. You're listening to Discovery. For those of you that may have just tuned in, this is UG Krishnamurti, a conversation with UG Krishnamurti, not J. Krishnamurti, a man who... Um, comes to the Monterey Bay area from time to time and talks informally with a group of people and we had a, an opportunity to record a conversation with him which you are hearing tonight on Discovery. This is 90.3 FM KAZU. We'll continue now with our conversation with UG Krishnamurti. How implies 
that you want to know from somebody. So asking the so question this, is is, uh, is adding momentum to that. You see, to know, to know, to know, and to know. You see, that's why we always ask the question, how? How means you want to know. Uh -huh. So what is there? What you call you as you experience yourself? The you as you know yourself is the momentum of that knowledge that is passed on to us. You see, it it asks this question, you think it's a very intelligent question and you demand an answer for that question and through that it wants to know how to add momentum to that, you see. So it's a trick, it's a false it's, thing, it's, tricking. No, it, it knows that that is the way it can add momentum to that. You see, it is not you, because you don't exist, you see, there is no individual there at all. The culture, the society, or whatever you want to call it, has created you and me for the sole purpose of maintaining its own continuity. You see? So, at the same time, we are made to believe that you have to become an individual, you see. Mm -hmm. These two things, you see, created the neurotic situation for us. Mm -hmm. So there is no such thing as an individual, and there is no such thing as a freedom of action. I am not talking of a fatalistic philosophy or any such thing. So it is this that is frustrating us, you see, the demand to fit ourselves into that value system is using tremendous amounts of energy and there is nothing we can do and we, to deal with the living problems here because all the energy is consumed by the demands of the culture, society or whatever you want to call to fit you into that framework of the value system. So we are not left with any energy to deal with the problems. You see, these problems are very simple. Living problems are very simple. In what way? How uh, simple? To, to survive in this world is, uh, is, is not a difficult problem, you see. The, but what is demanding is, is the value system, you see. We have to fit ourselves into the value system. That is consuming tremendous amount. What happens if we don't, if we just don't, if we choose not to? You, you seem to not choose to put yourself into the value system. I am not in conflict you. with the society, you see. You seem to be in conflict with the society. I am not, because it can't be any the different. Since you have found out in a way that there is no way you can bring about a change, you want to bring about a change in the world. You see, the problem is the problem of relationship, you mm -hmm. see, you know. It is just not possible to establish any relationship with anything around you, including, you see, the near and dear ones. Except on the level of what do you get out of this relationship, you see. See, the whole thing springs from this separation or whatever word, the isolation that the human beings live in today, you see. And so we are isolated from the rest of the creation, rest of life, you see, around us. And so we all live in a, you see, individual uh, uh, frames, you see. We try to establish relationship on, on what level, you see, on the level of what do I get out of this relationship, you see. Mm -hmm. So we use others, you see, to fill this, void that is created as a result of, you see, our isolation, you see. You know, I don't know if I make myself clear. The, this uh, emptiness, this uh, void we always want to fill uh, with all kinds of relationships around, uh, with people around us. So that is really the problem here. So we have to use everything. We have to use an idea. You have to use, you see, a person. You have to use... Um, anything you can get hold of to establish relationships with others. Without relationship you are lost, you see. So you don't see any meaning, you don't see any purpose because your only interest is to create a purposeful, meaningful relationship with the individuals and the world around you and to understand the reality of the world, you see. So it is, there is nothing to understand, there is no such thing as reality at all. I have to accept the reality of the world as it is imposed on me by the society. See, I call you a woman, I call this a bench, I call this a trail. Otherwise, you see, um, we, we, we will not be able to function in this world sanely and intelligently. 
This is this can be used only for the purposes of functioning in this world sanely and intelligently. But anything you do to understand the reality of the world is not going to be you know, useful, helpful, and meaningful. Nietzsche, how how are you and I different in perception? How are you and most of the people you contact? Is there a difference? The, you see, the thought that I'm different from you never, never enters my head. So it is the thinking that separates you, mm -hmm. you see, and tells you that, uh, you see, I am different from you, that I am functioning differently from you. You and I are functioning exactly the same way. Except but that I have, I'm cluttered want, with thoughts. Yes, it, you I, want I to know. You want to know. It is like a computer, you see, it's, uh, with an extraordinary intelligence, the way that tape recorder is, uh, is functioning there, but it never asks the question, how am I functioning? What it needs is only the energy there, you see. Electricity is necessary for that. But here, you see, the energy is part of life, expression of life. You see, the energy is already there, but you are all the time asking questions. The thought that I am different from you never enters my head at all. So if you ask me the question, uh, are you not different from me? All the knowledge that I have that separates you and me is already there in the computer. It tells me that you say, you are a woman, I am a man, you are more intelligent than I am. And, and the whole lot of uh, series of uh, ideas that are put there in the computer, that's all, you see. So your question brings the knowledge that is there, is, uh, stored in the computer here, you see. So these are the two computers talking, but you want to introduce an element which is not part of the functioning of this living organism and begin to think that there must be some something different here. I don't know. So it's my, it's, I'm, I'm making the separation. You are making the separation. What's the very question, you see, separates us because all the, there are no questions at all. All the questions are born out of the answers we already have. So we should be they sitting here in real. silence, probably. <laughs> Using that silence as a means of understanding is the game of all these religious people. You see, through silence, I am communicating something, you see. Uh -huh. In that silence, no communication is necessary. What's the, what's the nature of intelligence? What does that word mean to you? Yeah. The only meaning that uh, I can come up with is what we find in the dictionary. <laughs> do you, do, is, is there a, so there, the, are there levels of intelligence for you? Is degrees, there you are more intelligent than I am, yeah, that's because of our uh, background and our uh, hereditary differences. Is there a higher intelligence? Um, with the, uh, you are more intelligent than I am. You see, this is something <laughs> which can be measured. <laughs> you see, we have certain yardsticks in the world. It says that you are more intelligent than uh, I am, that, that's, uh, that's acceptable to me. But any attempt on my part to, to improve it, to change it, to modify it, you see, and make it better, is the one that is consuming uh, tremendous amounts of energy, that's all, you see. Then what you are left with is something extraordinary. It is not interested in comparing, you see, with, with your uh, intellect or anything. It, it's not a question of uh, settling for it or accepting it, you see, that, uh, that I'm a low-grade moron, you see, that I'm an imbecile. Ac it's, and acceptance is not the word, when once it is a fact that it is not moving in the direction of improving, changing, evolving into anything different, better, hmm, then what is there is uh, something extraordinary. It is unique in its way, you see, every individual is unique, you see. Nature is creating perfect species and not perfect individuals. Culture... It's, wait a minute, nature's... Uh, perfect species. But not perfect individuals. Not perfect individuals. Perfect Can individuals are created by the religious thinking of man, you see. So we have put before ourselves the model of Jesus, Buddha and all these religious teachers. So what As models, you see, uh -huh. so it would be a horrible world if this planet were to be peopled only by Jesus and Buddhas and all the others. So it would be a terrible, it would be a horrible world like if we were all Buddha? Filling this um, <laughs> whole earth with only roses of one kind, you see. 
It would be a horrible place. That's what education is doing to us. You see. So the individual isn't perfect, but the species is. Species. Every, every every human being is different. That's all that I'm taking, saying. You see, mm -hmm. every there is nobody like you anywhere in this world. I tell you, nobody. You see, I am talking physiologically. You see, mm -hmm. you know. So that we ignore and try to put everybody in a common mode and create, you see, um, what we call, you see, the society of uh, uh, the, the greatest common factor is all that you are trying to emphasize and educate them and fit them into the value system. If that value system does not work naturally, you see, the revolutions take place. The whole idea of restructuring is nothing but, you see, a revaluation of the old value system. Revolution only means the revaluation of our value system. Mm -hmm. So it's the but same thing. The same thing. After a while it uh, settles down and then they... And they go at it again. They go at it again. And there's no improvement. There is no... Uh, there is a... Uh, is slight, there? slight improvement. Well, now Mod there's... there's basic, see, that's, that's where there's hope. Ba then. Basically, <laughs> modified continuity of the same, you see, you know. Uh -huh. But with... there's a... if there's... A, with... but it's modified continuity. Modified continuity so of it's the not, same. So it's not much improvement. And in that process, uh, what horrors we have committed, you see, you know? Yes. Yes. Is it really worth all that, you see, you know? Doesn't seem so. That doesn't seem so. If after killing so many people you go back to the same system, the same technique, uh, what's the point? But well, we'll go on that way, sorry? I was going to ask about death since we came up to that point. What's, what is death? Is there anything... Nature, there is no such thing as death, but reshuffling of atoms, you see. <laughs> you see? What happens? The, the, the balance of energy in nature has to be maintained for some reason, I don't mm -hmm. know why. So, um, death occurs only when there is a need for uh, the atoms to maintain the balance of energy in the universe. So it's nothing but a reshuffling of atoms. So this uh, organism has no way of finding out that it was born at a particular point and uh, going to die at a, another point and that this is living at this moment and not dead, you see, because the knowledge we have of a uh, living organism, the birth, the death and all that, is absent here, you see. So you're saying you can't know whether you're alive or dead? Not every, no way. No way. If you ask me a question, are you alive, I would say I am alive. See, because the question is born out of the idea that how, you see, a living human being functions, acts and does things, you see, mm -hmm. that is the idea. So, naturally, if you ask me a question, are you alive or dead, I would say I am very much alive. Because that question brings the, all the knowledge, brings all the knowledge out that I, we have about, you see, the behavior patterns of a living human being. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have no way of experiencing the fact that this is, you see, a living thing. You see, the thought is dead. You see, it is trying to capture... So the thought's trying to experience something it has no capacity it's to no experience. no capacity because it will be burnt in that process, you see. Mm -hmm. If it touches, if you what touch a live wire, you see, you are finished, you see. Yeah. So it doesn't want to touch, it wants to play with that, you see. Put on gloves, and talk about it, you see, you know. What about, does the body have the um, understanding of that, minus the thoughts? The, the heart does not for a moment know that it is pumping blood. It's not asking the question, uh, am I doing it right, am I not doing it right, you see, it has no, it's, it's just <laughs> functioning, you see. <laughs> huh? It doesn't ask the question, is there any purpose, you see. To me that question has no meaning, you see. To me it has no mm -hmm. meaning. Is there any meaning? Is there any purpose? So that takes away, you see, the, uh, the living quality of the life. You are living in a world of ideas, you see. Nobody would ask this question, uh, what would happen to me after my death? Is there life after death, you see? And that's living, a big question that everyone wants to know. Is there life after death? What survives you, after death? You see, Anything I say would not be of uh, much interest to the, to the people. When people ask me, is there any such thing as reincarnation? Uh, my answer uh, is that uh, there is reincarnation for those who believe in it. 
and there is no reincarnation for those who do not believe in it. It's not a clever uh, answer because it is. Uh, how does how could it is belief? But if you ask the question, so belief a fundamental yeah? question. Uh, is there any such thing as reincarnation as the other laws in nature? You see, like gravity mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. things. My answer would be positive, definite no. Mm -hmm. See, it's not as much part of nature as is gravity. But if you want to believe that it is so, it's a different matter. So this is born out of the demand, you see, that something will continue after your so-called death, you see. It is the same mechanism that wants to know what will happen after death. Mm -hmm. Because the, for exactly the same reason, why you are asking the question, is there a meaning, is there any purpose of life, you see. So, for some reason, you see, that mechanism, that moment of thought, does not want to come to an end. But you have seen people dying there, you see. So there must be something, you see, that we live after. So the, the, the belief that there is a center here, that there is a spirit here, that there is a soul here, uh, is responsible for the belief that there must be something beyond this. So if you want to know if there is anything beyond, you have to die now. You see, so when the question or the belief about that comes to an end, the death will take place here, the clinical death will take place here, then the question whether there is afterlife would not at all arise, because it has no way of knowing that it is alive. And, you, and yet you said that those who believe in reincarnation will link them to this... The belief, belief. has to go. The, be the end of the belief is death. <laughs> you see, the So death ends all beliefs. Death ends... <laughs> <laughs> you can replace one belief with another belief, you see. One illusion with another illusion. That's all that we are doing. Hmm? Isn't that enough? Enough? <laughs> I have some more questions. Okay, go ahead. I wanted to the answers will be the same. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I wanted to ask about about love. We've talked about oh death. Oh my God. I yeah. know. It's oh my God. <laughs> what is what is people talk about love? They talk about what do you think, love. What do you think? I don't. I don't know. I don't know then. Is, is, is that another, another? There must be two. You see. I love somebody and somebody else loves me. Uh -huh. Wherever there is a division, there can't be any love, you see. <laughs> you see, we are trying to bridge this gap, mm -hmm. huh? which is horrible for us, see, which has no meaning, which is demanding, you see, something from us, with this fancy idea that there must be a love between these two individuals. Or between whatever. Or between whatever. I love my country, I love my dog, I love my wife and uh, what else? You see. So is there... Is what is the difference between I love my wife and I love my country and I love my dog? <laughs> <laughs> it may sound very cynical to you. The fact of the matter is that there is no difference. You, see. And is you, so you love your country, I love my country, there is war. You see. So, so there is no love? Love is another one of these thought things? That yes, created by thought. How about the body? Can the body know love? It does not love itself. <laughs> there is no separateness so there's, here. So there's no love. And see, you want me to give a positive <laughs> answer to your... I'm not trying to evade, this is not a uh, political uh, <laughs> interview, so I'm not dodging. I don't want to give any clever answers, <laughs> you see, diplomatic answers. And why we are asking about that, you see, love, you see. Well, obviously, human obvi beings ask obvi about that, they're consumed with it. Obviously, our relationships uh, are not so loving, you see. so we want to somehow, you see, make that into a loving affair, you see, uh, loving relationship. So you want to make and it feel better. And what an amount of energy you are putting into that, making our relationship a loving thing. Mm -hmm. It's a battle. It's a war. It's, it's like you're preparing yourself all the time for war, hoping that, it's that, there, will be, something else? that there will be peace, you see, eternal peace on this earth. So you are 
tired of this metal, you see, you, you, know, you settle for that horrible non-living, uh, non-loving relationship and hope and dream one day it will be, you see, uh, nothing but love. Love thy neighbor as thyself and in that name how many millions of people have been killed, more than these two recent wars put together. Mm -hmm. You see, how can you do that? Love thy neighbor as thyself. It's just not possible. You can't, it's impossible for any human Obviously, being Obviously, otherwise, why so many people, women, children, helpless people? Uh, well, but there are also some good neighbors, you know. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> when one's love fails to establish the perfect ideal relationship between the two individuals, what we are left with is hate. How can that be turned into hate? If not hate, is it is a uh, antipathy or uh, what, what other words? Uh, my vocabulary is very. That's, that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> what about sexuality? Is that just a reproductive function, or does it have some other? The sexuality, meaning for it? if it is left to itself, as it is in the case of other species, other forms of life, it's um, a biological need. You see, because this living organism. Um, has this urge to reproduce, one like this, you see, to survive and to reproduce. Anything you see for impose on that is totally unrelated to the living organism sex. And yet it's a lot has been superimposed so, but because on Because we have turned that, you see, what you call sexual activity, which is a biological one in its nature, uh, into a pressure movement. I am not saying anything against pressure movement. It has become possible for us to have sex at any time we want through the help of thought. So that's one of the ways that thought has separated yes, us from the rest us, of the, you of see. So, uh, then you see it's a bore again. So we have to write books like The Joy of Loving, you see Kama Sutras and uh, all kinds of things. Make it uh, interesting, you see. So, the, it is not possible for animals to have sex at any time they want. Animals um, use that only for reproduction, not that they use. It is there for the purposes of reproducing species like that, not uh, as a pressure moment. I am not saying anything against a um, pressure moment. I am not interested in saying that you should uh, condemn that, you see, uh, or become uh, promiscuous or use the sex as a means uh, of spiritual attainments. No, it, so so it, 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 it has a, sex as it's a, means a very of simple, a simple functioning of the living organism, and the religious man turned that, you see, into something big and concentrated on the control of sex. And after that, these psychologists, you see, have turned that you see, into something extraordinary. All commercialism is, you see, mm. related to that sex. How do you think it uh, it will fall into its uh, proper place? You see, it has gone. It's used to sell cars. How can? Yes, sure. You <laughs> I'm not against that. You see, please don't get me wrong. This I'm just pointing out uh, the use we are putting that is a simple biological functioning in, to use. See, you know, mm -hmm. that's all that I'm pointing out. I'm not condemning it, it's there, you see. So, to talk of that as an expression of love has no meaning to me. There's no relation between love and sex? No. That's pretty devastating. Most of the world... <laughs> I mean, shoot! <laughs> we, would love, we would love to put it that way, because it's very comforting, you see. If it is only for that purpose, as you put it, it's, it's, it's a devastating uh, situation, not only a statement, this is a situation. It wouldn't be so much uh, horrible as uh, the way you would uh, love to put it, but uh, it, it will fall into its proper place. So that is why we have invented all these things, the God, the Truth, Reality, ultimate pleasure, you see. Mm -hmm. That's quite mm -hmm. the goal, isn't so it? Whether, pleasure? whether you are here or in Russia or anywhere else, you see, the one thing that anybody and everybody wants in this world is to have happiness without one moment of happiness, pleasure without pain. It is just not possible because this living organism does not know 
what pleasure is, what happiness is. If the organism does not know what pleasure is? It doesn't want even. It doesn't Be want, an, it, it doesn't wants want. it, but it doesn't... Because, you see, all these pleasurable sensations, uh, the moment it is a pleasurable sensation, the demand to extend it, you see, longer and longer. We're going to turn over the tape now. For those of you who have just tuned in, you are listening to KAZU. This is an interview with UG Krishnamurti, a Brahmin, a man from India who has uh, gone through some interesting experiences in his life, uh, has some different views, I would say. We're coming to the conclusion of uh, this interview, and at that time I'm going to turn over the program, well, I'm going to turn over the microphone to Jeff Helwig and let him begin his own program a little early. Here now is the conclusion of the interview, the conversation with U.G. Krishnamurti. That is why there is this tremendous frustration there. We want to make it possible for everybody that you see you should always be happy and that you should have only and the pleasant sensations and pleasurable sensations and not painful. It may be possible through some drugs like ecstasy, but um, for how long? What, what does it do to our nervous system to strive? In the long this? run it destroys yes. the sensitivity of the... How does it do that? What's, what's the... You are not uh, in, in living uh, touch with uh, anything there. So it's separating us from separating what's nurturing us, us in yes. a natural way. Natural way. I, I need. I want to ask you about your personal experiences, and I know you. You don't want to talk you about see, that, I, but I, there's very the, often people ask the question: "Is whatever uh, has happened to me has happened despite everything I did?" Some of the biographers who are keen on writing the the story of my life mm -hmm. are very anxious to know. You see, what I did, what I did not do, what helped me to stumble into this kind of a thing. Assuming for a moment that some event in my life, some occurrence in my life, some happening in my life, which put me into where I am today, is, is, uh, is something valid and true. It is valid and true. You have to accept my word. If you don't accept, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter sure. to me. So whatever happened before that, all the events uh, in my life before that, you see, have no relevance to the way I am functioning. Yes. And from that moment on, there is no story to tell. I am here today talking to you, tomorrow I will be there somewhere else talking to my friends, the day after tomorrow I will be in England. That's all, you see. So there is nothing that anybody can tell anything about me after that, you see. It's just, uh, I'm a public man, I'm here. Any moment you want, you can see what I am doing. Mm -hmm. All the 24 hours, you see. I have no private life of my own. Any time you want to see what is UG is doing, that particular time, a particular situation, you, you can see that. So there is no story to tell. So that is the reason why I maintain that, you see, despite everything I did, whatever has happened to me has happened. But you are interested in finding out how and why that particular thing I am talking about has happened to me and not to everybody. So you want to establish a cause and event relationship and make it possible for everybody to stumble into this kind of a thing. So this is something which cannot be produced, reproduced on an assembly line. Yes, that's understood. This is a freak of nature. But, but it, would, it would be interesting to know what, what the freak of nature was in your case, even if, even it, if it can't. Even wanting to understand, you see, has no meaning to, uh, to you. you. Just leave it there, you see. There are so many freakish things there in nature. But if you try, you see, to copy it, you see, you are lost. You are mm -hmm. in the same situation as before, you see. Sure. So even nature has no use for this. It has discarded it. So it, it, because it, it, it cannot something. reproduce something like this, either physically or otherwise. So you're a discarded nature. Discarded nature. So how can you turn this into a model? That's what we have done. All those discarded people, we should have discarded them for good. Good, you see. How many? How many? I don't know. You probably can count on your fingers. The people that have had this. this I don't know. <laughs> I can't say. I'm not interested in uh, saying anything <laughs> about them. You know. 
<laughs> so what about what about all of the the religious ideas throughout the ages, the spiritual ideas? Is there any tradition that that you know of besides? I I can say one thing, and is <laughs> all that is false as far as I am concerned, and falsified me. So don't ask me the question, how can all of them be false? You see, no, that's not the point. Mm -hmm. it, I, I don't want to be falsified, you see, because that's not the way I function, you see, you know. I wanted to relate, you see, whatever was their state of being to the way I was functioning, mm -hmm. and that struggled and struggled and struggled so hard. You, it you got, struggled. It got me nowhere, you see. So, there is no way you can reject it because, you see, that created you, you see. Which, which created me? The, word, the value system has created you. And so there is no way you can free yourself from that, you see. Anything you do to free yourself from that value system is adding momentum to that, you see. This, this is the one thing that never occurred to me at that time, you see, what I was mm -hmm. saying a while ago. Thought cannot be used as an instrument, it can, you can use it to control, you see, shape it, mold it, you see, but you have no way of freeing yourself from that through thought. So even the idea that you should control your thought to be in a thoughtless state, to be in a peaceful state, is created by this thought so that it can maintain its continuity through some petty little experiences of those thoughtless uh, states you so are these, interested these, in. So these um, states of higher consciousness that people speak of are just they don't, if there is any such thing, you see, you are an expression of that. So you, why should nature or something, some cosmic power, if there is one in this world, is there one? Use, uh, you, you see, need the help of somebody as an instrument, you see, to to express that and help others. I, I don't see any point. You are as if there is any such thing as that. You are as much an expression as any of these claimants to that cosmic mm -hmm. power and as instruments of that power. Mm -hmm. Channeling that power, you see, to um, help people in this world. I don't see every dog, every cat, every pig that you see, the gardens like there, you, me, and everybody, you see, every, even Chinggis Khan, Hitler, expression of that same thing, you see. So he may have acted in a different way. You and I act in a different way, but we are all expressions of the same thing, and there is no need for that to use any channel. You see, other than you, you are an expression of that, you see. So, I even question the consciousness itself. There is no such thing as consciousness at all, let alone higher consciousness, super consciousness, cosmic consciousness. It is all created by thought. So, we were discussing this morning consciousness, you see, concepts. You become conscious of things only through the help of knowledge. I become conscious of you only through the knowledge that I have, which is given to me, which is passed down to me. The fact that I say that you are a woman, that you are a very intelligent woman, that you are a pretty woman, all this is part of that knowledge. Otherwise, I am not separated from you. You see, so there is no way I can look at you and say anything about you. You see, the eyes uh, act as cameras. You see, the, the object, if, there is, if I say object, uh, then you, you catch me there. It's a reflection of whatever is there on this retina, that's all. So there's no way of you, un of you perceiving anything except through knowledge? Or through, the, and you see, knowledge creates images, hmm. you see, you know? So there is no way this physical functioning can create an image there. The moment I turn this side, you see the whole thing is wiped out. I disappear. You disappear. It's because <laughs> the eyes are looking at her. Uh -huh. You see. So he asks me, you see, wasn't she pretty? You see, I say pretty is a word, you see, not the image, you understand? Mm. Huh? She's very sharp. I will talk about you in words. It's a word picture. But the images are, physical images are totally absent. So the so-called psychological images have no place there in the scheme of things. I don't know if I make mm -hmm. myself clear. Mm -hmm. So you see, the eyes are like a camera. If you turn the camera, it is looking at something else, you see. So this is white now. 
But what is there in the computer is only the word picture. Probably the sounds now, you see, they are dictating to the computers. See, and they have the problem of accent also. The Indian speaking with an Indian accent, the computers will have difficulty for some time, then they will learn the accent. <laughs> So you don't have to type it, you see. So that's the way the sounds are registered there in the computer. The, the word picture is there. That's all I give a word picture, not create the image. Because the image, you see, the, this is it's not focused on that. So the problem is, is very simple. If you can, how you look like, I have no way of creating the image inside of me. Mm -hmm. So it ceases to be a problem. You know, I met, you see, an extraordinarily intelligent woman, a pretty woman, but what does it mean? You see, the, my daughter sometimes asks me, you say, I'm your daughter, what, what, what does it mean? To, it doesn't mean a thing to me. So, if you, if I happen to be you see, next to you and if somebody asks me, who is she? Uh, this is my daughter, I say. My daughter, that's whatever the, the dictionary that's, meaning. That's the value system that we... Value, the image we have, you see, superimposed on that word. That is the, really the problem. So the physical images have to go first. There is no way that you can uh, do anything. Nothing. Not a thing. What is physical? What's what's this? What's the matter? You don't even know. I know I don't. I'm asking you. To, how would you describe that? This. You, uh, the same word you see that you use. Uh, this is a hand. This is my hand. But what's matter? What's the basic matter? There's no matter at all. You see, no the matter. matter is thought. You see, if you touch this, the sense of touch does not say <coughs> that this is a heart. So when once the, <coughs> the knowledge I have about this, the past uh, knowledge, <coughs> I say it is heart. Because that thought creates a space here and <coughs> sorry, the knowledge I have about it. <coughs> Excuse need, me. Need some water? No. Well, what, what, what is matter? Is matter... <coughs> what is matter? You want a definition? Sure. Huh? Thought creates matter. So that's what I was wondering. That's what I'm saying. So thought... Thought is matter. So if, if we obliterated thought, matter would go too? All definitions are of no interest to you, because what is there is uh, energy. Uh -huh. So it's just... It's un you see, that I am a free man, that I have discovered, that I'm going to free you all, you see. <laughs> no. Nothing. Yes. Um, we were talking about matter. Matter is created by thought. If we didn't think... Thought is matter. Thought is, is matter. matter. What about the dogs who don't have thought? What about the flowers that don't Probably have Probably they have some kind of a thought. I don't know, you see, but ours has become very complex, you see, and complicated, mm -hmm. you see. So is there thought that's not human thought that's part of this matter? There is, is no thought? thought. There are only thoughts. There is... there. Are, you see, that's what. There, is there a thought there in you? The question is the thought. Sure, there's lots is of thought. There a, no, no, no. Is there a thought? At the very beginning, I said the brain is not a creator. The thoughts are uh, not spontaneous. You see, they come from outside. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you translate that particular noise uh, with the help of is the the memory, which is mm -hmm. neurons. You see, mm -hmm. they tell you. To recognize. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's all there is to it. But uh, there are no thoughts. Very about thoughts. That's all that is there, the information. What is thought? The we ask that question because of the assumption that there is a thought which you want to know about, you see, other than what you know about thought. So what is there? is only about thoughts. All the definitions, thought is matter. You see, it's the statement, which has no meaning at all, often by itself. So Does is the there statement, any, any... thought is matter, has no meaning? Has no meaning at all. You see, I have explained why, why thought is matter. It's going to upset the physicists. It, uh, we don't <laughs> care for the physicists. What do we care for them? The state, um, the Nobel uh, laureates, they will get this, for against this. They also say, the scientists also say, there is no such thing as thought, there is no such thing as math, no. There is no such thing as matter, there is no such thing as space, there is no such thing as time, but what is called time, space, continuum. Continuum is necessary for them, otherwise the whole research collapses, mm -hmm. you know. So they could is there a space? No. 
There is no space. There is no way you can experience the space. So it's the thought that creates anything you say about space has no meaning. There is no way you can experience space at all. You know? So you can say thought, um, uh, there is no space, there is no matter, there is no time. Uh, and space, first you create, the thought creates space, you see, and then time is necessary to cover the distance, you see, mm -hmm. to experience space, to capture space, to do something with space. So then time comes in. There is no time, the only time is there that is arbitrary. It is 11 p.m. here, 11 a.m. somewhere else. Uh, we are 20 hours behind. If you travel, you see, you miss one day, you gain one day. All of our ideas of time, even chronological time, changes. You see, it's arbitrary. All measurements are arbitrary. We accept them as workable, that's mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. As a boy, little boy asked, why should two and two be four? It's a good question. Yes, he said he brought four apples or four mangoes, four oranges, you see, and four rupees. No, I'm not interested in that. Is there number two without one? Is there one without two? Oh, don't ask those questions, he said. And that's the end of our mathematics, arithmetic, he said. So we, I take it for granted that two and two, four, if you ask me four dollars, I count and give you four dollars. That's all, or four rupees or four... Uh, Rubles, uh, depending upon where I happen to be at that particular time. Yes. So even there in that area of counting, you see, there is always a reference point, you see. Mm. When somebody quotes the price of a particular thing, you always think in terms of the currency you are familiar with. Even the, the, the valuation of a thing is, there is a reference point there, the reference point is the dollar or the rupee or the pound as the case may be. So there is always a reference point there. So is there matter? Is there space? Uh, this is not metaphysics that I am talking about, uh, much less uh, what the physicists are talking about. The impossibility of uh, experiencing the space, because without thought there is no way what you call you can be severed. What you call you is the thought. There is no you there other than this demand to experience space. You or see, matter. Or matter as the case may be. Or time, you see, you created the timeless, you know. All achievements are in time, you see. Where do these thoughts come from? They are all over, it's just a thought uh, sphere, we are functioning, but one uh, question for which I don't ask that question because there's no point in uh, posing that question to myself, nor am I interested in finding out the answer for that question is that uh, is it always from outside passed on from generation to generation or they are also transmitted through the genes. I have every reason to believe that uh, the totality of knowledge is not only transmitted through our education which is mm -hmm of all forms, shapes and sizes and degrees, but also to a greater extent through genes. Now they are saying that uh, the capacity to learn not only languages but a language is genetically controlled. What do you think of the um, work uh, that scientists are doing on genetic engineering? This sounds I am all for it, but uh, if it is handed over to the state, they will use it um, to make people do things without any resistance. So now you have to educate them, teach them patriotism, make them salute the flag and go to the field, use guns and hear not It takes uh, decades to brainwash the people, either to believe in God or not to believe in God, to believe in democracy, to believe in communism. But there you don't have to do a thing, just give a drug, they will go and kill. Even there, you see, when first one is all, that is a problem, you see. Then on, your killing is a simple. You ask any murderer, first time you have this problem of killing. From then on, it's easy. You act like a machine gun, kill people, you see. Thoughtless action. So, this is the basic question which we all have to ask and should be interested in, is what kind of a human being you want on this planet? What kind? 
What do you want a human being to be? See, what is your answer? Whatever you want can be created through the help of genes rather than through this process of educating people. This it takes years and years and years to make him believe something and free him from something else. See, so evolution. If, you, if there is a tendency, see, to, towards alcoholism, if there is a tendency to smoking, if there is a tendency to thieve, it's a lot easier. You see, to change that for whatever reason, you see, you know, uh, that individual and free him from thieving tendencies. Is there any such you know, thing? Rather than, you see, giving lectures on morality and teaching him ethics, it takes years. So, it's a, but, so the, the, the change can happen through a biological... Yeah. But when once, you see, the knowledge acquired by these uh, genetics, or whatever you call them, is passed on to the state, we are in trouble. You see, the state patronage is necessary for them it to seems, carry on the It doesn't seem likely that it's not going to become a state function. It will, you see, they will hand it over, you see. The, at least some place. Yes. Everywhere. Why some place? If you don't do it, some other country will do it, uh -huh. you see. So, um, so, but you're saying that, that there is a, a that you species have, evolution possible through um, Is there any genes? such thing as evolution even? That I question. Yes, and I know. Darwin put us all on the wrong track. <laughs> You see, but it's not he just said Darwin, it's acquired there. characteristics are not transmitted from generation to generation, but that is not so now. So for hundred years we believed that, you see, you know. Hundred years we believed the, the theories of uh, Freud, you see, but... Um, well, for thousands of years there's been a, an acceptance the, of evolution. See, now the things are changing so fast that you will not be able to keep pace with them. The tremendous... Uh, um, communications we have, the systems we have, you, you, you don't, whatever is happening here um, is happening everywhere, we not actually happening, they are able to see what is happening here, what is happening there in Bangladesh, mm. in no time, mm -hmm. the time factor is reduced through it to the minimum, mm. so the help of this uh, modern communication But that's not, that's not evolution, have. that's that's no, it is not evolution, trial and error, you see, you are perfecting the, mm -hmm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I watched uh, this interesting program, the 50th anniversary of television, you see. <laughs> I, I watched them in those days, early 50s, my God. And they look so archaic, so crude, <laughs> compared to what we see now today. It was an interesting program last night. Mm -hmm. What would you want for the human species, if you could, if you could, um, we well, have a wand I'm not chosen as the no, I know you're not, the guardian if, spirit or... <laughs> if, you, if, if you could have it the way you'd like it, what, what would you... I like it exactly the way it is. I don't have to do a thing about it. I am not in conflict with this. It can't be any the better. It can't be any the better. Anything you want to do with that, you see. So is there violence? There is this, that and the other. Yes, the violence is, is inevitable. As long as you use thought, to bring about a change within and change without, there is bound to be violence. Bound to be. And, and what you're saying... Your attempt to, to be in a peaceful state is a war there, you see, a battle mm -hmm. going on there. Sorry? Mm -hmm. I forgot. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not uh, who has given me the mandate, you see, to change the world, you see? No. So you think, are we, are we as a species, headed towards destruction? Is there a possibility of emerging I'm not a, out of this? I'm or? not a prophet, but the, you see, the, the future is already here. In, in what way? In, in, in the present, uh, you see. How, how, is the how can be? it be any different? As I said, you see, through war you cannot create peace in this world, mm -hmm. can you? You but cannot. I wouldn't think so. So probably we, we will we'll come to a point where we will be forced by circumstances that we have to live with our adversaries. The way you see this living organism is functioning, every cell, its a survival depends upon the survival of the cell that is next to it. Mm -hmm. The terror mm -hmm. that if I try to destroy something else, I will also go with it. It's not... Uh, on that level, you see, for love, bliss, and religious thinking, physically, you, see, you, are, you are going to be destroyed. It will affect you, the terror that if you try to destroy, um, 
people around you, you are going to be destroyed with it. Maybe that will keep us together for a little long. Why should it be permanent? You see? Why? What for? Well, that's a Tell good me. question. Why? I don't, I don't why know. Why is this question? We are asking. It probably won't be permanent. We, we are not concerned. We are not doing anything to keep it permanent. Are we? We are destroying everything there in nature. Ecology, ecological problems have been created uh, by us, you see. How do you think you, anybody who says anything against exhaust fumes, who is himself driving the car, that fellow should be shot at sight, on sight. He's also contributing. And he, he says, I know, says, don't believe that fellow. All the ecologists don't believe them. Because they are not really interested. Uh, they are not really interested in that at all. You see. Is anyone interested in? Nobody is interested. So nobody's interested. Nobody's not, interested. Not, not even you. Uh, I am not. I'm the last person to be interested because I don't want this to be anything different. This is pretty bleak. You know? It's not bleak. <laughs> uh, how can you say it is bleak? That's the only thing. It's a real thing. It just is. It is. It is. It's not yes. bleak. It's not anything. Not at, it just not is. at all. Not at all bleak. Uh, you would like to use that word. Fancy phrase bleak. Is it bleak? Look at that at this moment. Wonderful. I don't write poetry. It's in the next moment I'm looking at you, you are as beautiful as the ocean there. Huh? Probably more beautiful. You see, if I am freed from uh, you see the, all the ideas that I have of a beauty, you see, you see something, you see, you know. Extraordinary. That's all that I'm interested in. Nothing <laughs> needs to be done. <laughs> to change anything in this world. The things are changing in their own ways. The nature is changing, you see, some volcanic eruption somewhere and uh, some earthquake somewhere. Why these things occur, we don't know. Uh, no seismologist can predict with exact uh, precision that, you see, we are going to have an earthquake in a particular place at a particular or an time. an asteroid is going to hit us. And huh? I said, or an asteroid is going to hit us and we knock us into another orbit. Yes. We don't know if it's too much time. Why, why are we concerned about all those things? Who created this world? We, we leave it to the metaphysicians and the science. Probably because we're afraid of death. We, we don't are want afraid to of coming to an end. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to come to an end. Are, there, are you afraid of coming to an end? There's nothing here to come to an end. See, that's maybe how we're different. I'm, yeah. I'm no, so no, concerned. Don't say different. Don't say <laughs> different. Don't say. Well, nothing will come, I don't to, want to, I nothing don't want to come to an end here. Except the except. one that is does not want to come to an end is interested in preserving somehow, in some way, even beyond, you see, you know, beyond. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to succeed because the, there the change is... <laughs> It's not amusing, it's a fact. Yes, I understand. It's a fact. I think we've finished. Finished, really. <laughs>